Researchers argue that Aziz Dheri is one of the most important archaeological site in this entire region. The reasons are, first, it is the only stupa settlement. Secondly, it is the largest stupa settlement. And thirdly, it offers you an uninterrupted cultural profile of the ancient Gandhara period. Let's explore it. I'm joined by Mr. Fawad Khan, who is professionally working here at Aziz Dheri as assistant curator. And he's going to walk us through the entire site. So my first question is, what is the difference between motive stupa and the main stupa? So we have two types of the stupa. One is the main, which is the main activity part of the central people. The other is a votive stupa. These stupas, these small stupas, they are actually created by some people for donation or like sometimes the merchants or the monks who are visiting and they stayed over there and so then after that they just create a small stupa for the people for the, their worshipping purposes. Mm -hmm. And you can see that uh, here starting from here, religious custom was that they, they were circumambulating in the clockwise. Mm -hmm. So here you can see from the start, from the beginning, here is a Jataka story, which is the previous birth story of the Buddha. Mm -hmm. This one is the Dipankara Jataka, which is believed. Actually, there were about 540 or 542 Jataka stories. The Buddha is not only this, our historical Buddha. He was born 540, 542 times before this birth mm -hmm. to bless the people. Mm -hmm. So this one, the Dipankara Jataka, this is considered to be the last one. And it took occur, it occurred in the uh, Nangrahar area of the Afghanistan. So as it is in close uh, boundaries with the Gandhara, so very often, very often we found these Dipankara Jatakas in Gandhara. So starting from here, we have the Dipankara Jataka. The next scene, you can see the birth of Buddha. Here, the mother, Queen Maya, she's standing and giving birth or delivering the Siddhartha. Next, uh, uh, this all this is the story from uh, in the so the life yes, cycle of Buddha the, the life cycle captured. of the Buddha yes it also worked actually as a as a movie as an education mm. for the monks mm. so they could easily understand mm. rather they can study in the books and the previous the old books so here they can see it live mm. then here we have the sculpture of uh, Buddha and we have the Bodhisattvas this type of fashion it occurred in some late period of the buddhist era and about uh, in our archaeology terms we, we can call them the kedarites or the late kushans okay. that the stucco uh, art that was developed in that time there were some reasons first one was that the by that time people started attacking invading this land so the uh, artists there doesn't have much time to make a to cut a rock and to polish it and to make a sculpture and so they, they didn't have time. So easily they can take a mold, they can put stucco in it and easily they can carve. So this uh, stucco art it started in some late years of the Buddhist history. So finally here we have the death scene of Buddha. You can see this is the line, there are the mourning figures. that we earlier visited was votive one and this is the main stupa so why is it called main stupa well comparing the size of the stupas so far we have the bigger in size in, the, in this side so far discovered hmm. so we are calling it the main stupa hmm. another characteristic is that here we have found the stair risers which is a very unique element in the gandhara so far from any other site we don't found the so compact and so solid stair risers. From this side, from this stupa, we have found the stair risers. So you were mentioning about stair risers. Yes. What what are those? Stair risers are again actually they, they are the panels in the shish stone, mm -hmm. and they are again depicting the life stories or sometimes the flora fauna of that time, and they are installed in these steps to give the stupa more beautification, more moderation. So that is a very unique uh, aspect in the Gandhara art. So far in any other stupa, we, we don't have found any 
su such examples. But here in this stupa, we have the complete story of the complete sterilizers mm -hmm. in this in these steps. So, when was this archaeological site discovered? The discoveries for the very first time it was mentioned in 1913 in the Archaeological Survey of India by Nathisa Yar. He was the then superintendent of archaeology, and he discovered for the very first time this this site. Later on, Mr. Bruce of the Temple University of Russia he mentioned this site. But later on, in 1992, the director of archaeology and museums, KP Government. They have discovered the site and they have started the seasonal excavations. The excavations conducted here for the first time were in 93, then in 1994, 96, 98, up to 2013. The last session of excavation that was conducted was in 2013. This site is massive and it still feels that it has a lot of potential. More artifacts would be there. If we are going to excavate it again, do you see the possibility of of discovering more artifacts? Yes, of course, the site do have many potentials. Actually, it is both a sacred and secular site. Both we have the stupas, monasteries, both we have the uh, residential part of this. Normally, in the, in the case of other stupas, they are on a side, mostly on the mountain tops to give some discipline or to give some distance to the monks for their meditations. But this is a complex. We have the religious part of this site, we have the sacred, the, the secular side of uh, aspect of this site. So of course it do have potentials, it has many, still many antiquities under it. Antiquities that have been unearthed, where are they exhibited now? Where have been they taken away? Antiquities, some of them are now on the display in the Hunt Museum Sawabi, mm -hmm. as actually the site is also in District Sawabi, so we have displayed them in the Hunt Museum. And of course, major part of them are in the reserve collection. So, are these monastic cells? Actually, during the course of excavations, we have found that this site, it probably was from the uh, earlier Kushans up to the, even we have traces of the Islamic period from here. So, these probably, these were originally monastic cells, chapels or cells. But later on, due, due to the continuation of time and the invasion of other dynasties, so probably they have converted them into some residential parts or other uh, rooms.